My name is Miles Hargrove. My dad was kidnapped and held hostage for 334 days by an armed guerrilla group in Colombia in 1994 through 1995. I was a 21 year old college student, dropped out of school, flew back to Colombia to be with my mom, and that's where we spent the next 11 months negotiating for my father's release just testing our will, so we have to maintain our position. The advisors who we had hired had really tried to get us not to pay this ransom, but my mom made that decision to go ahead and do it. So we felt a lot of guilt as well, like maybe we had screwed this thing up. We'd been kind of mavericks the whole time, like just doing it all on our own. We knew that every decision that we were making could end up getting my dad killed. I will never forget his eyes. They were without hope. Joining us now from his home in Dallas, Texas, is Miles Hargrove. Miles, thank you so much for joining us. Listen, the footage um, you shot is all now this documentary, Miracle Fishing, Kidnapped Abroad. The New York Times called it unique and harrowing. It took 26 years for you to finally make this story that is made for a movie or TV. Why did it take so long? I mean, I was so young uh, when it all happened. I'm, and then, so I had to learn basically how to become a filmmaker, how to how to edit. I mean, not just the technical part, but uh, to, to, to properly tell a story. It, it was just a long process. I thought I was going to get it done in the early 2000s, and I found out that that was a pretty naive uh, way of thinking. I mean, it, 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 I financed it by myself. Wow. Uh, and it took years and years to just kind of go to different, the different countries and, and, and speak to the various people that helped us out. Because you had to unpack this story, which is incredible. It all started, your father, Tom, was a journalist living in Columbia. At the time, you were in college in Texas, and you got a call that your dad was in trouble. What did they tell you? What did they say? Uh, well, yeah, I, there was this mess, a bunch of messages on my machine and everybody telling me that there was some kind of a problem, please call. So I got a hold of my dad's brother, my, un my uncle, and he was like, your dad was on his way to work this morning. And, and my immediate assumption was that he was in a car accident. And he said, and he was kidnapped. Mm. And I just, it just literally knocked the wind out of me. I, I could not believe what I just heard. It, it took it took a number of minutes to to kind of come to to where I even remember things again. After Miles reset, he launched into action and assembled a team of people to free his dad. What happened next after the break? Talking with Miles Hargrove about his documentary, Miracle Fishing, Kidnapped Abroad, that features home video Miles shot while his family desperately attempted to free, get his father freed from kidnappers in Colombia. And joining us for the first TV interview together, Miles' brother Getty, their family friend Linda Arcole Musso, and Dina Liebegat, who live next door to the Hargroves in Colombia. Thank you all for joining us. Miles, we went to the break. You'd gotten the call. Your father is now being held. You're a young man. You launched into action. What was the first thing you knew you needed to get done? I, I mean, we needed to establish some sort of line of communication with the kidnappers. Um, it, it, it took a while for us to realize that we were going to have to do it on our own as a family. Um, but uh, that was a number of months. But once we got to that point, it was just all about trying to, we just had to communicate with them. That was That was the number one thing. And you, Getty, got the call. You were 20 years old when your dad was kidnapped. What, did you think, wait a minute, what, what do we have to do? We have to save dad? What's going on here? It was just a bizarre situation, uh, you know, something we couldn't have prepared for. Uh, and uh, we just tried to roll with it and, and try to figure out the best we could do to, uh, to, to bring the situation to its conclusion. Linda, you were living in Peru. You are a family friend. How did you get involved? What did they say to you that caused you to leap into action here? Well, I just wanted to go and to and help them, you know, because my husband was in the same kind of work as Tom, and I just thought this could be me. 
and Susan and her family would be right there for me. What did they tell you they needed you to do? Well, they didn't tell me they needed anything. I just said, I'm coming, you know, <laughs> and I had, I had no idea what that meant. Uh, the whole kidnap thing. I just brought Susan a lot of mysteries and chocolates, you know, and of course that was lovely, but that isn't what they needed, you know. You came so I had no idea, but I soon learned from all of them and was always inspired by who they were and what they were doing. Everyone needs a family friend like you. Call, hi, we have an issue, I'm on my way. Dana, you were 13 years old and you were a kid pulled into it because you had to communicate with the kidnappers. Well, well, well. <laughs> I was not exactly the, the master communicator. Uh, I was far too young for that, and thank God I didn't get involved in that. But uh, yes, I, I got pulled into it, being uh, the daughter of uh, the family living next door to the Hargroves. And uh, so, yeah, I, I became the youngest member of the whole team. And uh, I think you're referring to those letters which were mentioned. Yes, you in were the, writing the response the letters. Yeah, you were writing the response letters to the kidnappers. That's a big role, by uh, the way. Yeah, it was it was maybe a little smaller than that because it was it didn't involve too many letters. But uh, I got to write one letter and that was uh, very exciting for me. And uh, it was uh, yeah, it was a big thing for me at the time. I absolutely. love how modest you are. You're like <laughs> you're you're part of the key of this puzzle. So you know, Miles, you've assembled like this mod squad. Linda's called Leopard Lady because she's always fashionable in every scene of this documentary. In the end, you fought for your father. Your mother has passed away. Your father is no longer with you. They won't see this documentary. But it is a love letter about what you will do for family at the end of the day. Um, absolutely. And, you know, to me, this this group, I mean, this is only part of the group that, that came together to get my dad out. They're, they're my family, you know, because of, of the sacrifices they made. And so I didn't get the opportunity to, for my parents to see the film. Uh, but the rest of the group pretty much entirely has been able to see it. And, uh, you know, it's really for them as yeah. well. It's a love letter to them. Getty, how did it feel to know you and your brother and this team got your father free? You were able to do something that many others, especially during that time, uh, were not able to do. Uh, well, it felt really good to, uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to have him released. Uh, of course, we were so excited when it finally did uh, come to its conclusion. It finally did happen. He was finally released, and, and that comes through, I think, in Miles' film. Uh, we were just really, uh, you know, we we just rolled with the punches as, as they came and, and, and basically tried to uh, adopt and, uh, and, 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 and do the best we could. Well, it is a heck of a story, as I said. I mean, that's why they made a movie inspired by it. Congratulations on obviously being able to bring this to light and to be able to have your father with you all of those years after you thought you would never be able to hug him again. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Miles, the documentary again right now is called Miracle Fishing Kidnapped Abroad. It's available now only on Discovery Plus. Thank you all.